The return up for Parlo. Leaves it off. Here's Mia Hamm. In the box. The shot. Go. She's got the record. Hey everyone, my name is Sabria Whitaker and I'm the founder of Grow the Game. Erica Piancastelli here, Tokyo 2021 Olympian. This is Carly Jackson, professional goaltender for the Buffalo Buttes. Hey everyone, this is Connor Moore, the social media manager of the Chicago Sky. For the first time in You are now listening to Women's Sports Matter. Women's Sports Matter. Hosted by Gianna Belcastro. Arete Ogunbowale wins the national championship for Notre Dame. And welcome to another episode of Women's Sports Matter, your one-stop shop for all things women's sports. My name is Gianna Belcastro and I am your host. And again, for the month of September, we're doing NWSL player interviews. I mean, I mostly focus on the NWSL now anyways, because that's what's currently happening. But I thought since playoffs are getting closer and I kind of want to branch out a little bit with the different teams that I'm covering. Interview different people. An amazing, fantastic thing that I came up with that no one else has done before. So if you have missed the first two episodes of this four-part series, episode one was with Amanda Kowalski of the Chicago Red Stars. Episode two is with Kaylee Kurtz of the North Carolina Courage. And this week, we have another player interview. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Lauren Belay. I play for Racing Louisville. Um, I would say like a midfielder, but lately it's been all over the map. So midfielder, defender type. But yeah, I'm really excited to be on the podcast. I'm really glad you're here. The first thing I'm going to ask you about is um, you really don't have a label when it comes to like where you are. I mean, technically on Louisville's roster you're listed as a midfielder (laughs) I've seen different um names for like what I think what was the name the thing that they put underneath your name for that video um for your Uh extension announcement they put like positional phenom or something something like yeah positional phenom yeah which (laughs) I thought that was hilarious but yeah it's, it's been all over the map this year which has been quite fun actually is that something you did like with North Carolina and at Colorado mm-hmm. College or is that more of like a recent thing for you? Um, at Colorado College, I mostly played in the midfield. I played like a maybe half a season on the wing. Um, and then at North Carolina, I only played in the midfield. So, yeah, this was definitely it was a bit of a twist for me. I said to someone, I was like, if you had told me I was playing right or left back four years ago, I would have been like, absolutely not. But, you know, I, I'm honestly very happy. and. Um, it's been quite the test for me, but I feel like it's actually like really improved my game a lot, which I'm happy about. Is there like when it comes to like picking a position, if you just had to pick one for the rest of your life, do you know what you would pick or are you kind of like could go? Either yeah, way? you know, you know, what's crazy is like I used to be like I'm an eight, like an eight because I feel like that's basically what I played in college was an eight. Like I love going box to box. Like, I actually really love defending, um, but I also love to get into the attack. Um, but now I, I don't really know, honestly, I'm, I feel like the best position is just being on the field. So wherever I'm tossed in, I'm, I'm all for it, honestly. And like, whatever people need out of me, I'm willing to do. So yeah, it's been actually quite fun to just explore. And I would have never, I would have never been like, I really want to be an outside back. So it's like interesting now to be thrown there and been like, you know, it's actually like a fun spot to be honestly. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the extension video um 2025 you extended your contract before I ask you about the video I want to ask you about why you decided to extend your contract with racing yeah um I really love it here to be honest um my fiance and I like have really found a lot of love here and um it's a bit closer to my home my hometown's in Colorado so it's left um in North Carolina I was a bit further away um 
but yeah, I, I actually like the facilities are incredible. The people are amazing. The fans, like everything about Louisville, we actually have like grown to really love, which is crazy because I never thought like in a million years I would end up in Kentucky of all places. But like now that I'm here, we actually like really enjoy it. And it's so central to so many like Nashville, Chicago, like there's so many things right around you that are like very fun to go to. So we have actually really enjoyed it. Um, so, I mean, in the soccer, like we we're growing such a great young team that I like actually really want to be a part of that and help like build it um being now what like middle aged 25 I feel like you know I can help you know build that and being here from the beginning like starting something and like seeing it grow I think that's like a very fun thing to be a part of so I was when they when they asked me I was like absolutely I would love to stay I I can understand about the like the closeness of home um I am from Illinois, but I go to school in Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Never thought I'd be in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. Just like some random state to be in, you yeah. know? Yeah. No, when you when you plan your life, like when you look back on it, I'm like, I was literally like, I'm never going to leave the West Coast. Yeah. And then I got drafted to North Carolina and I was like, all right, peace, family. Like, see you, <laughs> see you later. But like, bye. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And now I'm, I'm like, now I'm in the Midwest. And I'm like, well, I don't even really feel like Kentucky's in the Midwest, Kentucky but like, I feel like it's count. It's like its own weird, like, I don't yeah. really know how to describe Kentucky, but it's like a little bit of South, a little bit of Midwest. I don't know. It's just definitely like its own little spot. There's here. like, I have my own definition of the Midwest. And for all the Ohio listeners out there, guess what? You're not a part of it. It stops at <laughs> Indiana. It stops. It's Indiana, <laughs> Michigan, Illinois, Wisconsin, um, Minnesota, um, Iowa, and let's see what else am I gonna say? Do I give Missouri? Do I let Missouri in? I'm gonna say no to Missouri. Yeah. That's that's my <laughs> definitive answer. Nebraska's not even in there. That's yeah, my Midwest. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely like whenever people try to just like I'm like they ask me what Louisville and Kentucky is like. I'm like I honestly can't give them like a straightforward answer because I feel like it could legitimately be all over the map. Like you know, it's just hard to explain. Yeah. Uh, I when I went to Louisville, I want to say like four years ago, it was really nice. I don't think I've ever been to where the stadium is at. That wasn't a part of our. Uh, we went to Louisville Slugger. Mm-hmm. We, nice, we love, yeah, that's pretty cool. But... It's a very nice museum, and there's yeah. there's a lot to do down there. I was quite mm-hmm. surprised. It's like, do you have a favorite um favorite like hangout spot or restaurant or just a fun activity somewhere in Louisville? Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, it's been quite fun to, like, explore and enjoy because there's actually, like, a very, like, rich history and culture here. Um, I mean, obviously, like, with the racetrack, like, that's always so fun to go to. It's, like, bring my family and friends there. Um, And, like, they actually, my fiance and I were just talking about how good their food, like, the food here is really good. Like, a lot of good Cuban food. Um, La Bodeguita is, like, very popular with the team. Everybody loves it. Um, But there's, there's, like, honestly so much to do um and like there's actually a lot of like outdoorsy like we have two dogs so I love like taking them to creeks and whatever else they can get their paws in but yeah I love it honestly it's been really fun okay back to the video that looked really fun um (laughs) and for the people that haven't watched the video go to racing Louisville's page I think you got to scroll a little bit you're you're gonna find it it's a great 53 (laughs) second video about Lauren's extension um kind of like it felt um like office-esque a little bit at least the beginning um but what was it like to uh, shoot that was that intended like was that um when you had gotten your contract extension and they wanted to make an announcement was that video like originally a part of that plan to announce it or can you tell us a little bit about like the whole planning and shooting of all of that yeah um when you know that the the conversations kind of started happening our front office and our social media team was like we have this really great idea and when they presented it to me I was like I was giggling I was like that is so funny like I'd love to be a part of it like they're like do you want to film it I'm like absolutely like a I get to drive a lawnmower so like that's all you have to tell me um but yeah it's actually really fun because I I got to kind of like step into different parts of like different people's shoes that are like a part of the facility that you wouldn't normally like 
not that you don't think of them, but like it, their job, like I stood in the cafeteria and was like serving people. A, I'm small. So I was like struggling to get the plates over the top, which I was like, I'm going to break the plate. A, but also it's so hot in there. I don't know how they do it. They like, I was pouring, like, dripping sweat. Like, so I, you just have like that type of appreciation for the people that are in the facility, like doing their jobs. Um, but yeah, the lawnmower, I was like, I was like, can you please just like lift the blades up? Because I, I'm going to literally like rip your grass to shreds. And he was like, no, no, like you'll be fine. Don't worry. And I was like going so slow. And he's like, Lauren, you got to drive it faster. <laughs> like you got to speed up. <laughs> Cause I was just like cutting the grass. So like in one mm-hmm. spot basically. And he's like, no, you need to like drive it. So I was literally like, and he's like, oh, just keep it really straight on this line. And I look back and it's literally like this. <laughs> like, so I was so <laughs> But it was really fun. Like, it's actually, like, quite difficult to keep it. Like, they, uh, props to them. They have kind of a really hard job. Like, uh, he was like, yeah, I've sat a lot of hours in the seat. I was like, I can't imagine. But, yeah, it was really, it was actually quite fun and, like, funny. And it was, like, fun to be part of, like, a bit of a lighthearted kind of skit, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was, it was really fun. I mean, it, it was hilarious. I thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed it. Um, the I really love the amount of time and effort that NWSL teams put into like video production for social. Um, yeah, because the stuff that they can't come up with recently has been top notch. Like Washington's, um, like the coffee shop thing, Kansas City mm-hmm. with their stadium, your contract extension announcement. Those are top notch. Yeah, definitely. We're going to travel back in time <laughs> to when you were first beginning to play sports. I have uh, listened and, and read um, some of the interviews about you, and you talk about how your sister has been a big part of why you play soccer. So I was mm-hmm. wondering if you could discuss a little bit about, um, you know, how that relationship with your sister and, you know, watching her play soccer inspired you to you know continue to to play and then you know be a professional now yeah so Brooke is my older sister um and literally we were so close when we were we're only three years apart so I was like everything she did I did I was like I want to be like her so any like she went into gymnastics I was in gymnastics like and it's probably my parents were just like well that's easy we'll take you both there but I literally wanted to do everything she did and um she was super successful in high school like I think one player of the year in our region like maybe three times in a row or something like that so I was like that to have that level of like just talent but also like somebody that wants to achieve greatness in your household um was something that I was always really inspired by and always like made me want to push to the next level and we would literally me and my sisters would be like 1v1 all the time so it got like very we were like competitive with each other but like we understood like at the end of the day, like when we go home, we're just like, sis- you know, sisters. Um, but I mean, and my a younger sister inspires me, like she also played and I got a bunch more years with her, but just like having an older sister, like you always look up to her. And um, yeah, she was also like, we live in a really small town and it's in the mountains. So like we didn't have access to like a big club. Um, so my sister would drive three plus hours to train in Albuquerque, which is like that's where like the closest big city is. Um, and so like growing up to see someone ch- like chase a dream and step outside of something that like nobody in our town was doing, like everybody thought we were like bad shit crazy for doing it. Um, and people were like, you, they're going to burn out. Like they're not going to like this. And um, my dad and my family was like, well, if she loves it this much. Like we're willing um, to make those sacrifices for her and for the family. So watching her do that I was like well if she can do that like we can literally do anything like even if it's like maybe we're geographically challenged in that way like we didn't have like we literally were driving every weekend and we also played high school at the same time so at times like Brooke and I were traveling like 13 plus hours in the car just to play games because we like loved it so much but to see that type of sacrifice and mentality from someone like in your household including like my parents and my sister I was like well you know I I this is like I don't know. It was like, honestly, quite a dream to like live that with them because it made us so close. Like my family and I are like this. And that's why I say like being closer to home, although it's 13 hours, like driving for us is nothing these days. So um, honestly, like it means a lot for me to be like closer to them because we literally are like best, best friends. Like I talk to my dad 
pretty much every day and my mom and my sister. So it's like, it's really, it's been quite a journey for us, but having that type of mentality in your family, like there's this freaking, there's no limit for you, honestly. Yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. I, so I'm guessing you're from like Southern Colorado then if you're driving to New Mexico. Yeah. I'm like the Southwest corner. So like Denver, Denver's like six and a half from us, but you're going like over, we would go over like two to three mountain passes to get there. So it's not like, it's like a straight shot drive for us. And that was like too far for our family to be like, all right, we're just going to jaunt down over to Denver. Like it was easier for us to go to Albuquerque. It was was easier to go down. So club play in New Mexico Mm -hmm. and then college in Colorado going to New Mexico Mm -hmm. that's that's commitment if anything (laughs) yeah I mean and that's like you know I feel like everybody has this like a some type of story like if you make it to this level like you sacrifice so much and for me it was just like part of it I was like well you know like that was also like I you know I've done so much and I've sacrificed so much like I better get to that like I'm gonna do anything it takes to get to the next level because like that's something that my dream has been like that's like such a fire in me that I've been like well, I don't care that I drive three hours. Like, I don't care I miss prom. I don't care I miss home. Like, I was like, do, I don't care. Like, send me. I was like, anything to get me, like, with a ball at my feet. Like, I don't care. So. Well, you love to see it. <laughs> do anything for the game. Exactly. As say. <laughs> um, one thing that I found really interesting, because I have never heard of the college that you went to. Um, <laughs> so I was, like, looking into it. I'm like, what is this place? All the sports at the college are D3, except for men's hockey and women's soccer. And that is just wild to me because mm-hmm. um, I didn't even know you could do that. Mm-hmm. It's, I think it's one of there might be. I'm not sure now, but when when I was playing, there was maybe two other schools that had similar like a D3 and a D1 or like a D2. And it, it was something like but it, they were different divisions. So, yeah, it was definitely interesting. Yeah. So what was it like playing in the Mountain West division? Because I feel like that's one of the more underrated um, Mm -hmm. college conferences in the U.S. Because, of course, you have the Power Fives. We get it. The Power Mm -hmm. Fives are cool. They're great. They want California teams in the Big Ten, whatever. That's fine. (laughs) But, you know, we got things like Mountain West, A-10. Those are only two that I could think of at the top of the uh, right now. but what was it like playing in that division? Yeah, I think it's kind of like you said, I feel like, you know, when kids are looking to commit to colleges, they're like AC, like all of the big five. Right. And for me, I didn't have like I wasn't being looked at by any of those schools. So like call her to college, which I laugh because everyone's like, call her to college. Where's that? I'm like, OK, but um, yeah, it's uh. It also has like a very Colorado college itself has like a very rich women's soccer history. It was like one of the first programs to start. So like they were one of the first women's programs, like when title nine started, they were like, which was for me very cool. Cause I love to be a part of like, you know, that's when people talk about like the history, I'm like, that is amazing. Um, But the mountain West was gritty. It was hard, honestly. Um, And there was quite a bit of travel because you had like, you were all the way up to the West coast as well. So you had like San Diego state and, um Fresno and some of those places were actually quite hard to play in and UNM was very good Boise State was awesome like it was a hard conference because our out of like we would go play really big teams out of conference but then we'd come back to conference and it would still be like similar it'd be it would still be really really challenging um so I I honestly like I really loved it it was definitely like a gritty conference like a a hard working most teams were like very hard working a big athletic like it uh, it was it was a great experience for me and I loved being like the underdog when we would go play like big team like we played Texas A&M one year and like nobody expected us to do anything against them and we like we ended up losing but it was like a really good game so it was like kind of fun to to kind of be like a sleeper conference I I feel like because nobody really expects anyone to come out of the conference to be really good but like it was fun to to be a part of it for sure. I always I'm learning about all these different schools each day. I'll be looking at like, <laughs> um, like team schedules. I'll be like, Georgia Southern, where yeah. where is that? Um, 
And and for the family, my family that is listening, I don't care about football. I only care about the real football. Um, <laughs> so there you go. I don't care about yeah. Nebraska football. I, <laughs> I get a text while I'm at, I, so I'm a soccer manager for the Nebraska women's soccer team. And I get a text from my uncle during the game. I'm working the game. And I look, and he goes, oh, Scott Frost uh, got fired. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm working, though. I'm work- I'm at work, but thank I'm at you. Work. I don't really care. I don't really <laughs> I care don't about care. football. I don't think that's really a part of the college experience, you know? Yeah. Football well, game. Well, that was, like, my- yeah, my college experience was, I mean, we didn't have football, so, like, we were all big on hockey and whatever. So, I think that was definitely, like, for some people, it also was very small. I think it was 2000 undergrad. So like you knew everybody, but like for me coming from a small town, going to a small school, I was like, yeah, it's kind of nice. You know, it's like comfort of home. I've had a mix of both small school, big yeah. school, mm-hmm. very big school here. Yeah, um, definitely. But it feels small. And I kind of yeah. like that. It's got yeah. a nice homey feeling for me. Yeah, that's good. I feel like honestly, like now that I've traveled around a bit, I like, I like, like Louisville feels like a, a a little big city like it has the amenities of a, of a big city but it mm-hmm. has like a very small like commu- like community feel which I love because I feel like I get lost in like the big big cities I'm like why are all these people like what is happening I'm also like five one so any like crowd I'm like Dude, I feel the same way I'm five two and let me yeah. tell you short person struggles are a Literally. thing it's annoying <laughs> like I'll stand next to some of the the people on the team and I'll be like, God damn, I'm so short. My best friend, he's 6'3. Uh yeah, the classic. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just yeah. like Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you on that one. It's, it's the, the struggles. The struggles are real. Mm-hmm. Um gotta gotta love it. <laughs> Definitely. One thing that has been really interesting about this NWSL season is that there's two California teams. Um, yep. What has it like interacting with um, or playing against these new expansion teams? Because, you know, with racing, there was an expansion mm-hmm. last year. You were a part of that. You got picked in the expansion draft. So what is it like yeah. being someone that recently went through the whole, like, first year of expansion – to look at you know these two other teams that are in the league and like how they're doing yeah I think it's I think it's hard to compare because we are in such different markets and I think like there's so many players that are from like California area so I think a lot of people like did want to go home um which is totally fair and I think obviously I'm thrilled that like these expansion teams are doing so well um I think that it's a testament to the league and like a testament to like the markets that they said maybe weren't going to do so well. I remember people being like LA market, like no way there's too many teams there and it's literally thriving. Um, So I feel like, you know, that's just another like step towards like women's sports do matter. And like people do watch, like if you're going to put it on a big screen, like people are going to come and people are going to watch, which I, I love. Um, And it's, it's cool to have different markets like going to San Diego and going to LA is is always fun. Like we haven't been to LA yet, but you know, you want those experiences of playing in those big sold out crowds, right? Like that's why, not why you get into sports, but like that's half, like that's so much fun, you know, like testing yourself in those environments. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's definitely like a bit of a different thing for us as well, but yeah, I like, I'm all for like, I'm all for the expansion teams. You know, I think it's just, it just is like an upward trajectory for women's soccer and I'm, I'm all about it. I'm all about it. If you had to pick three locations and I'm going to say you can't pick your home state. If you had to pick outside <laughs> of it. Um, okay. I, I have a feeling you're probably going to pick somewhere in, in Colorado. Um, <laughs> if you could pick three locations outside of your home state, where would they be mm-hmm. and why? For like a new expansion team? Yeah. Okay. Well, I would pick Utah because I – loved like when they had a team they had a really good following and I also just love Utah in general and I think they had a lot of like really great fan base um let's see where else um I feel like maybe like Atlanta would be kind of cool um I mean they have like such a good base with like Atlanta United and I feel like that's a pretty big market and I feel like there's a lot of there, there could be a lot of good things happening there. 
Um, I don't know my last one. Hmm. I like want to say Cincinnati, but I'm like not a hundred percent sold on it. I just think Cincinnati is pretty cool, but then it's really close to our market. So that's like a little weird, um, but it could be a really cool rivalry. And I'm like trying to think of other states that are like in the United States, in the United States. I'm like, what, where, like, where am I? Um, I mean, there's 50 states. I know, but I'm like, you know, you're not going to put one in like Montana, you know, like that just seems silly, yeah. but I, I feel like maybe like there needs to be a more like a couple more in the West. I guess there's like Kansas City now, but yeah, I would definitely say like Utah, maybe like Atlanta, maybe like Canada. I don't know. That'd be kind of fun. I feel like that'd be a- okay. So my thing would be Vancouver because I think like that side of the of the Canada is better. Um, just because I've been to like Banff and all of those places. And I think it's really cool over there, but I also think Toronto is a good market as well. And I think that'd be fun to be like in that area. But I think either of those in Canada would be pretty fun to go to. I think a Cincinnati team would be really cool. I went to Cincinnati um, a few years ago and that was a really nice, um, I guess, city to be in. Um, Yeah. That would be a really interesting rivalry. Yeah, definitely. I feel like, yeah, you know, just get to plan Cross the river. Who's out- yeah. Who's out there listening? <laughs> Cincinnati? <laughs> I don't know if we got big time investors listening to the show, but if there are. <laughs> yes. There's Cincinnati an idea for money. you. <laughs> Take it. It's free. Oh, I just want a little, like, give me a jersey at least or something. Exactly. Like yeah. Like if we were a little bit part of this, the seed that was planted, <laughs> let us know. Well, I did an interview. Um, I talked to former Red Stars player Zoe Gorowski, um, mm-hmm. the first ever interview that I I did, and we were talking about how LA should have a team, and then months later, I want to say like five or six months later, Angel City's announced, and I'm like, we called it. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I <laughs> I did this. I did this. I did this. It was me. Well, it was me and Zoe. We we called it. Um, give me a jersey now, please. Yeah, hundred percent. Their jerseys are pretty cool, actually. They've they've got some nice stuff. I I bought um like a white shirt, so that Chris and Press shirt. But nice. I usually don't buy white jerseys or white shirts because I don't trust myself. Mm, fair like, enough. I mean, those the the mint kits, those are pretty solid. Yeah, I actually really like our mint kits. They're fun. Do you have a favorite Louisville kit? um from your two seasons there so far I mean obviously I really actually really like our home kits I was like a little eh, about but I feel like they've really grown on me and I feel like they represent the city so well but honestly I think the mint kit is chef's kiss um I also just like love playing in in like white and I love like the mint combo because we didn't really have mint in like our first year so it was like nice to bring mint back um in with our our away jerseys so I think those are pretty cool I want a full mint like just oh, the, all whole yeah. green shirt you know yeah that'd be honestly I I really like also I love lavender so I was like that's the lavender kit was nice but I'd love like instead of it being white like all lavender so like lavender shorts like lavender oh I think that'd be nice too like I think the the one thing that I don't like about uh the jersey rules you have to have like white away kits which is yeah why? yeah yeah I know I, I would agree I just I I have my own opinion on it I'm not going to go too deep into it I don't <laughs> want anything no I don't think any higher-ups listen to the show but if they do if you want to hear my opinion send me an email because oh my god do I have so many um <laughs> but moving on one of my favorite parts about watching NWSL is the fans on Twitter live tweeting the games or using mm. hashtags like Chaos Cup or mm. NWSL After Dark? Do you have yeah. a favorite like, um, maybe Twitter or like a, a hashtag that is used to discuss um, NWSL games that are going on? I think the NWSL After Dark one is just so fitting because I think that legitimately there's so many games that like 
since we're on the east coast that like i go to bed like they're on the west coast or they're playing on the west coast and i've like gone to bed and i wake up and i'm like how what like what is going on like you know those types of games where there's barn burners on either where you're like well, how did i yeah. miss this um i feel like that's a very like accurate hashtag like for the nwsl like it's literally sometimes it's just absolute i'm like how did i miss that there's, so yeah I think there's that's some great one. stuff mm-hmm. I, i'll sometimes i'll stay up to watch the games um central time is better than eastern time yeah. mm-hmm. in my opinion um there's one of the people who listen to the show that says eastern time is the best time zone and i say no thank you sir <laughs> That's I don't funny. think I don't think so. Um, but I'll like stay up and watch and I'll like just be scrolling through and be like, oh that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Where you just scri- in the morning, you know, when you're like checking, yeah. you're like, what is going on? So yeah, I definitely think that's like a very good hashtag to have. Yeah, I was following along um on Twitter with the Washington and San Diego game. And that, that was, was- that was, that was crazy i was watching in i was literally in bed like watching it just like oh my God. literally what is happening yeah so that that, that definitely or like cha- like whatever the chaos chaos I'm like, cup yeah. for yeah i'm like cup. yeah that yeah that also was fitting i feel like most people like ha- like they come up with these really witty ones but they're like simple but they literally fit so well that i'm like yeah that can for sure just carry on the rest of the time and be cells a thing yeah do you have a favorite like NWSL meme? Because there's there's some good ones out there. Do you have a I favorite though? I don't know. I'm like not. I feel like I'm not as. I don't know if I have a favorite, and I'm not really sure what they. I don't know. It'd probably have to be like a funny one about the refs or something. Honestly, that's usually yeah. That's <laughs> that's one of my favorites. Is like a tweet about the ref, um, or there's like. One thing that I've seen a lot recently is the picture of uh, Amber Brooks, like, doing the, the double fingers. Yeah. yeah. Double middle fingers. And that's funny. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's, that was, we were, I was watching just like this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, good, good, good on them. So. Um, or those, like, there's, like, these different accounts, like, meme accounts, I guess. So, like, NWSL Facts that does it does not post real facts it posts fake facts but they're hilarious and so i'll retweet them i know it's satirical and i retweet them because i know that they are i don't know if other people know so that's a whole other issue (laughs) it's a whole other that's a whole other box you don't need to open right now (laughs) (laughs) so i hope like because i'll i'll be liking stuff on the wsm twitter and I hope people realize like I know that it's a joke. I'm not taking right. it seriously because I'm not a news account. So it's yeah. like I'm then. going to retweet the joke. I will yeah. do it. And I don't care if you like it or not. So mm-hmm. this is not a news account. Are you a fan of lightning rounds? Do you like lightning rounds? Fast sure. facts? Yeah. Let's okay. do it. We're gonna do that. Right. Now, first question. I always ask the same first question. Okay. If you are reading a book or listening to an audiobook, or just any book or audiobook that you've had read or listened to, what is something that you would recommend to the listeners of this show? Oh, man. I have a lot. Okay, so I'm an English major, but I loved Jitterbug Perfume. If you've I don't ever know what that is. That. Oh, it's great. It's honestly such a great book, but I'm also like a big fantasy reader, so like the harry potters are great or like lord of the rings like those would be like i would i could listen or read those pretty much every week probably knowing me follow up to that are you one of the many nwsl players that reads colleen hoover okay so yes i read what did i read the first like the one that was super viral for a hot minute i can't even remember what it was called i read one of them but the rest i have not read Okay. So that's been yes, I've now? been I've been asking because I know that it's a thing. Yeah. Recently. So I ha- yeah. I, I guess the people want to know. So I I'm, I'm just I'm just curious. I don't know anything about her. I don't know anything about her books. So I I yeah. know it's fiction and that's Yeah, that's they're it. like it's like more rom- romant like romantic. Yeah, I can't. Not, do well, that it's like a night for me I like I was like oh this is a fun like 
it wasn't a light obviously like the book actually wasn't like a light read it was more it was a bit sin- not sinister but kind of dark I don't know it was kind of a but it was an easier read than I'm used to I guess so I was like wow this is fun I compared could compare to you know, Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter yeah I or like some so. yeah something with like a lot of like world building I'm like yeah. yeah that's a bit easier to read than something like that so yeah all right next question do you have a favorite coffee shop in Louisville Ooh. um yes and it's not quills which is what a lot of other people said it's um and I literally laugh because I don't even know if I say it right but I say Synergos but a lot of people say like Synergos but it's so good I love their coffee so much I guess with the like names saying names are hard right Louisville there's Louisville oh yeah for on your team are there more people that say Louisville or Louisville I think more people say Louisville, less people say the other. What I don't even Louisville, Louisville. I feel like when people first come to market, they say Louisville, and then like people say, "Don't do that," and so you're like, "Okay." So then you like try to sound like you're from here, (laughs) and then you say Louisville. But I feel like that's like a marker of like you've been here long enough to like say it right. So yeah, yeah, I feel if you've been here for like more than six months, you probably shouldn't say it the other way. I guess is more of like if you're kind of a local. You know, because yeah, I'm growing up, I I used to say Louisville. Yeah. And then I was told, oh, that's the wrong way to say it. Okay. Now I'm going to correct everyone since someone corrected me. <laughs> right. So that's, yeah. that's my journey. I say Louisville now. End of yeah. story. Speaking of teammates, I want to ask mm-hmm. some questions about like most likely to. Okay. For that space. Most likely to park their car in a very huge parking lot and not be able to find it. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe Sab DeMello. It just gives me Sab, Sab vibes. Is there any particular reason? or? I just feel like she'd be like chatting and like not like just, I don't know. I just sometimes she gets a little I I just am thinking about her in like our rondos in the morning and like her feet just go like wild and crazy so I feel like she would like forget where she parked and just be like a little wild and crazy like sprinting around like the supermarket parking lot trying to find her car so that's that's why I say that okay most likely to trip while doing sprints (laughs) oh my gosh maybe like chids alex chidiak i could see that happening um she's she's also just so goofy so i could see her like doing it as like a like a fake like a fake out or something i think it'd be hilarious but yeah i would say maybe chids most likely to be late for team practice oh my gosh these are these are hard i'm like i want to be like firing but i'm like i don't know i have to think about it um I want to say someone that sleeps a lot, but it used to be, I mean, it used to be Addie, but she's not on the team anymore. Um, Maybe like, I don't know, someone that's, I honestly, that one, I don't know. Well, we'll let the fans decide. Yeah, you got, you guys can, can let me know. We'll, we'll do a little poll on, on Twitter and be like, who do you think would be yeah. late? The final one about teammates is most likely to become a coach after retiring from professional play. I mean, I would say myself um, or like Gemma, maybe. Um, I'm literally like, I say that because I'm actually getting my coaching license this year. So I'm like, um, but I know Gemma has expressed interest in wanting to do that as well. So maybe Gemma as well. You're getting your coaches, your coaching license. What is it, like B or A? D. B. Yeah, C. What What's that process like? Yeah, it's been fun. I'm in my like, I think it's my fourth or so week. But yeah, it's um, it's actually great. It's all NWSL players. So um, from a few teams, I guess now. Uh, but yeah, it's been great. Um, and with the academy right here, it's quite easy to just, you just they're literally like play on essentially the same pitch as us. So it's, and I obviously know Mario, Mario well, who is our assistant, but also runs the academy. So it's been really great. And I actually like really, genuinely enjoy like trying to like seeing them at the games but also like coaching them it's been really fun 
Um, but yeah, it's actually been eye opening, but also like really exciting. And it's, it's just such a good time to be doing it. And I think we need more female coaches. So I'm happy to be a part of that movement. That's amazing. I wish you luck in continuing on getting the license. I know that it's a lot of work. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want to ask you one more final thing before we wrap up the show with um there was a fill the fam thing that happened I want to say a mm-hmm. few weeks ago. Yeah. Um what was that like seeing uh, the, was it the most fans that have ever been in attendance for yes. racing? Yeah. Okay. What was that? Yeah, like? it it was awesome. Um, I always say that like the the crowd's like your twelfth man. Um, and I feel like crowds can really like change momentum, especially like for the home side. Um, but it's also just really cool to see like the younger fans that are out, like not just like young girls, but also like young, bo- you know what I mean, and families that are there. Um, I think that that's like the coolest part for us is like seeing everybody, like all the young fans that line up and want like you know that want to be a part of that and are really excited to see you um i think that that's like so cool to see that you know the community of louisville is kind of like backing us and um i think obviously like we love playing for them so it was it's just it's it was really cool to see and it was loud so it was fun to play and i think those environments are always really fun and especially when it's your home field i mean i I watched that game and it looked very packed and yeah like a lot of fun so I haven't been to a, well, I went to the Soldier Field game. I was going to say I haven't been to a game where there's a lot of people, usually, because the the times that I went to Chicago's games, it's either raining or it's too hot out. And I'm just like, Chicago's hard. Chicago weather can go away. Nicely go away. (laughs) Politely, please leave. (laughs) Politely, get out of here. Yeah. You thought it's bad in the summer. It's horrible in the winter because of lake effect snow yeah it's probably freezing too no it's thanks the worst that's why i live in nebraska now no lake effect snow yeah 100 no, like, makes period sense. yeah so now we've reached the end of the episode but before we say goodbye at the end of the episodes i'm doing shout outs to whoever you want to shout out time is yours take it away <laughs> Oh man. Well, I guess shout out to my family. Um, I literally like wouldn't be here without them. And I feel like having such a strong like family, even if it's like friends or whatever, having a strong unit back you in something is like um A, the best feeling ever. And B, like I feel like you feel almost invincible because they believe in you so much. So shout out to my fam. I love you guys and my fiance. Woohoo, we're getting married soon. Can't wait. So yeah, shout out to them. Shout out to them. Where can people find you on social media? Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Um, my handles are just my name, Warren Malay. Um, yeah, follow me. Enjoy the ride. I post a lot about my doggies. So if you love dogs, I'm the gal for you. But yeah, and my adventures. So Adventures. I wish I was going on more adventures, but there's nowhere to go in Nebraska. And all I do on this show is complain about being in Nebraska. That's my <laughs> that's my personality now. It used to be I hate being in Illinois. Now it's I hate being in Nebraska. Doesn't matter though. <laughs> I wish there was professional soccer that I could go to over here, but there's not. Maybe one day. You never know. I heard the, the team world. took a trip to Kansas City last year. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping they do it again while I'm here so I can go Amazing. so I can go there. Yeah, perfect. It's not that far. And maybe I can go to Louisville sometime yeah, in the future. Come on. Yeah. We'd love to have you. Come back again for a for a match. I don't know if yeah. I can wear Louisville gear because I my heart belongs to the Red Stars. Oh yeah. Well you can I just, could like... be convinced. I could be convinced. I do All own right, other well, that... NWSL gear. Okay, well, bet. Well, I got you. Don't worry. I will convince. I'm like Louisville's biggest mascot, I swear. I'm like the cheer. I'm literally a cheerleader for Louisville. Like just the city in general. I'm like, yeah, it's so great. <laughs> yeah, Louisville. Woo! Yeah, Louisville. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do my ending spiel, which is what I call the worst part of the episode because I ramble for five minutes. No, I'm just kidding. It's only like one and a half. 
Here we go. If you want to follow me on social media, guess what? You can. I'm on four different platforms. On Twitter, it is W Sports Matter. And on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, it's Women Sports Matter. I made it so easy for you to follow because it's the name of the show. So it's so easy to remember. That, there you go. You can follow. I just told you what it is. YouTube, you want to watch this interview and other interviews and more content? Subscribe to the Women's Sports Matter YouTube channel. Everything is linked down below because, of course, it is. Why wouldn't I link it for you? Because I'm a responsible podcast host, of course. If you want to listen to the two other Women's Sports Matter podcasts titled Don't Touch My Jersey and More Than 5%, that is linked down below. And again, More Than 5% hosted by Carly Jackson and Zoe Hicks premieres on September 29th at 11 a.m. Central Time. There's amazing resources linked down below. Trevor Potter Project, Register to Vote, NAMI, um, links to all the Players Associations for Women's Sports Leagues in the U.S., all of that linked down below. So if you want to learn more about a player association, you want to learn how to get a mail-in ballot because you're away from home and you're in Nebraska and you want to vote in your local election, I'm talking about myself. Order a mail-in ballot, please. You're welcome for reminding you. What else is there to say? We've got one more interview coming up in our NWSL player interview series. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I know who it is. And that's better than last last week when I didn't know who I would be talking to this week until a day after I did that interview. Because I'm really good at planning things. So I'm going to announce that soon on Twitter. So pay attention. Go follow. I've got nothing else to say. I'm going to go do some homework because I'm a responsible college student. And I'll see you next week with another interview. Thank you again, Lauren, for coming on this week. I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out today. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was so fun. That's going to be it for me. Again, this is Women's Sports Matter. I'm Gianna Castro. I'll see you next week. That's all, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs>